What's up, YouTube? It's Red G, and today I'm reading um, Psalm 33. So I've been having work and just um, reading my Bible in my free time. So I got a little ahead, but today we're going to jump in on verse 33. I pulled it up here so y'all can follow along with me, and I'll go down as I read. All right, let's get ready. <clears throat> it says, Praise for God's goodness. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is commonly for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp, sing unto him with falsery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song, play skillfully with a loud noise, for the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord, God's power. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of, mouth, of his mouth. I scroll down so y'all can see the whole. I want y'all to be able to see it without having to squint or nothing. Because at the end of the day, I want y'all to be able to follow along. So, got it on the screen. All right. We're starting there. All right. It says, He gathereth the water on the, of the sea together as a heap. He layeth up the he layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. God's chosen people. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people of whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Let me scroll down so you can stay, stay following. Okay. It says, the Lord, um, this is verse 13, if you're trying to follow along on the screen. It says, The Lord looketh from heaven, he beholdeth all the sons of man. From the place of his habitation, he looked upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioned their hearts alike, he considered for all their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of a host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. Uh, and a horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him upon them that hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive and famine trust in his holy name our soul waited for the lord he is our help and our shield for our hearts shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name let thy mercy O lord be upon us as we hope and that was at the end so y'all can see those last verses and then the speaker notes say um this typical this is a typical beginning for a descriptive praise psalm, which has the two main elements: a call to praise, a call a cause for praise. Even though only the harp and partially are mentioned, they probably represent all the represent all the musical instruments used for worship. A new song might be one newly composed of a special for a special occasion, or it might mean a new experience of God's acts through the singing in the song. Loving, righteous, and judgment means doing acts of righteousness and justice. They are not abstract attributes, but they involve actions which are directed towards God for his people. This verse of what specifically specify this psalm as a cre creation hymn, along with these, um, with PSS 8, chapter 8 and 104. Even though they refer to different things, the word of the Lord here in, in verse 4 are related in that they both originate with God. The Lord of creation is the God of revelation in this in the biblical text, the God of history who interacts with his people is the same God who spoke the world into existence. This brings back together the generational revolution of the creation and the special revelation that God gave to his people. Though some interpreters argue that this could be described the Exodus event, the immediate context argues for creation. The nation he hath chosen is Israel is in contrast to the nations in verse 10. The terms chosen and inheritance refer to divine election of the nation and is unique to the relationship to the Lord. The omniscience of God is described as looking down, observing, gazing in the inhabitants of the earth. Even though his habitation is heaven, this does not mean that he is unconcerned with what is happening on earth. Moreover, he does not only know what is, is happening, but he's act actively involved in it. The word fashioneth is the same word used in the creation account of God shaping man from the dust of the earth. This connects the creation acts of God with his involvement in history. The Lord has a concern for his own people that is unique in comparison to the other nations. And that's the rest of the speaker notes and how I summarize that and how I understand that and apply this to my life is where it says, um, Behold, the eye of the Lord, and this is um, 
Psalm 33, chapter, I mean, verse, chapter 33, verse 18, it says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope is in his mercy. So that's basically talking about, like, the hope we have in Jesus that um, we believe as Christians and followers of God that Jesus died for our sins and made a way for us to be able to live and have a way to salvation because we're all sinners through and through. And um, Jesus is only the perfect person that didn't live, um, like, didn't commit sins. He lived the perfect life. And so if you are reading, like, this is still Older Testament, but a lot of the Old Older Testament before we got here was talking about how a lot of people had to sacrifice it every day, had to do all these different practices just because of their sins. Now we don't have to do that because we just, God wants us to repent. Instead of sacrificing, he wants us to repent and change our hearts so that we don't keep following those ways and that we lean on God instead of leaning on things of this world to make us feel fulfilled. And that's something that God's been really working on me through and helping me a lot with, like even today. I, I worked like an 18 hour shift yesterday. So I got home and I ended up working that shift um, that night. I got home at like, I got home later at like 11, I think, like 10 to 11. But I didn't go to bed till like 11.30 because I had stuff that I did. I got home earlier, but that's the time I went to bed, like 11.30. And I had to wake up at six to go to work. And then I ended up working an 18 hour shift. So I didn't go home until midnight that day. And then I woke up this morning at like 7:30 ish, went to work, um, and I just got off, and now I'm doing this. And but even even while I was going to work, and I was like on the way to work, I found time to read my words. Still, like I didn't have time to do everything. Like literally, I could be getting ready. I woke up, came, brushed my teeth, threw on my clothes, and left. Like didn't eat nothing. But God provided. Like He made me be able to have snacks at work, so I can get through that shift and even now after I do this I'm about to go chill with the bros and grab some food and it's just like God always provides and when you trust him with all your heart you really start seeing the beauty and all light everything and that's why for me instead of like worrying about the life and what happens the next day I'm just gonna take it day by day and say God let your will be done whatever you have in store for me today let it be done like and when I really live like that I feel a lot more fulfilled and a lot happier and it's a blessing. So I urge you to repent, turn away from your sins, and believe that Jesus Christ is our Savior and that he died for your sins so that you can live, so you can live for him every single day and gain salvation and eternal life to be able to see him and thank him in person. And that's what I dream of doing. And I dream of seeing y'all all with me, that all my supporters, even people that have just watched for the first time, if you don't know Jesus, now you do, and I urge you to read your word, you know, open your Bible, read, even if it's just this, I'll keep, I do these every day, and I'll keep pulling up the word so you can see it, because when you read the word, whether it's online, the physical Bible, anywhere, whatever, whether it's talking to God, you can start really building a relationship with God, so I urge you to start today, like, what you got to lose, you got everything to gain, because right now, let's say, like, let's say you're an unbeliever, what do you have to lose from, um, I believe in I hypothetically right let's say let's say that Jesus that you don't believe that Jesus rose again what's more crazy to believe that people are lying and saying that they denied their Savior multiple times like Peter he literally says that he denied like Jesus told him to his face that he's gonna deny him three times Jesus Peter didn't believe at the time but then Peter ended up denying him three times and he admitted it in the Bible so you think someone would write in a Bible and just lie about them denying their savior, the person they looked up to, the person that gave them eternal life. Like you wouldn't do that. And I think that just shows like, even right there, you should realize, okay, if he's not lying about that, why would he lie about other stuff? Is it, like, really, if you don't believe, I urge you to really read the Bible and try to have an open mind because it just all makes sense. And it, it makes sense because it's the truth. And even sometimes the truth is far-fetched, but a lot of the stuff in this world is far-fetched and a lot of the stuff the world prom promotes God talks about being stuff we're going to have to battle with. And if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, but not everyone's doing it. That's why it's not promoted in our uh, society. If you're liked by the world, you're probably not going to be liked by God. Like, as far as, if you're living, you can't live for, you can't serve two masters, it says. And nobody it is written that it says, it doesn't say, like, specifically that, but it's, like, generally says, like, you can't serve two masters. Either you serve the world, which Satan's in charge of right now, or you serve God and live for 
him every single day. And that's not to say he's not going to bust you with things at this world. Like, I look around my room, like, even be able to go up here, like, I got a double monitor set up, all this stuff. Like, that's a blessing. Like, got this chain, all this stuff. Like, but at the end of the day, this can go. All this, like, I could lose all this. Like, when I die, I'm going to lose all this. And do I care? No, because I'm going to inherit an eternal life. That's why I'm sharing this message so you can inherit that eternal life too. Just turn towards him, repent from your sins, and believe. And live for him every single day. I said, and he, I said, it's effort. It's effort. Every single day you got to repent, turn away from your sins, and keep doing that. Because you don't know when he's coming back, but he's giving us time to change now. And he's using me to, uh, to spread the word. And I thank God every single day that I have a platform to be able to share it. And I have now 406 subscribers to uh, like and supporters like that's that's so cool and i hope that more people keep getting uh, spread the word and we keep growing so more people can learn um stay blessed and i'll be back tomorrow i love y'all and i want all y'all to be safe get safe now make that change love y'all